Before you get started with the video today, let's talk about how to use these videos. We're working with Microsoft Access 2013, but if on your computer you have 2007 or 2010 versions, this tutorial will work just fine. There's eight parts to what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to create some tables. We're going to create relationships between those tables. We're going to create some forms with multiple table sources, our invoice. We're going to format that invoice so it prints well. We're going to add some more controls. We're going to create a query to sort the data for finding overdue invoices. Finally, we're going to create a report. And then the application will be finalized, removing all menus and creating a navigation form. And so you'll be done with a nice application that looks like this. It's a program that would run a small business that we're going to use. This one's called Crystal Pools. It keeps track of our customers, it keeps track of our invoices, it keeps track of our products that we're selling and it keeps track of who sells them to us and also creates reports so that we can see who has not paid our bills. And so you can see that Access is more than just an application that creates documents. It's a programming language. It's a system to develop databases. Previous lessons worked with Microsoft Office Tools. The teacher here is me, Shad David Sluter. I work as a teacher in Tolleson Union High School District at Westview High School. You can use these lessons to follow along. So eight videos do exactly as the videos show, duplicating on your own screen. And finally, when you're done, instead of printing the application, we're simply going to grade it as a standalone program. Now let's get going. Hello and welcome to the first video on Microsoft Access 2013. What you see on the screen in front of you are three spreadsheets made in Excel. Let's pretend that we're working in a business and we're trying to keep track of our customers and our products and who we buy things from. And so you start to create these lists in Excel. So the first one, for example, is the table we'll call vendors. And so these are all different companies that sell us products. And then in another spreadsheet, you have a customer list. And so these are all the people that have come into the store and we've recorded their address and their phone number. And so we know who our customers are. And then there's another product here, or another table we'll call our product table. And so these are all the different things that we sell at our store. And so after a while you realize that these three tables and other lists that we keep track of need to have a better system of organization than just simply Excel. And so that's why they invented Microsoft Access. Access is a bit different than the other programs in, in Microsoft Office because Access is actually a programming tool. You create applications. And so these videos are going to show you how to create an access database that will keep track of our customers, our products, and our vendors, and the invoices that they generate at our, at our store called the Crystal Pools Store. We'll get started right away into Microsoft Access, and you will learn along the way some of the principles and some of the programming tools and some of the design options that people have to focus on when they create programs in a database. And so Access is like other database programs in that it has tables and a lot of rules to make them work properly. But you'll see that as we go. So I'm going to start with a blank database. And the first thing you notice when you start is that it asks you to save. That's the first step in creating your database. So let's call this Crystal Pools. And you can choose the folder where you want to save it to. So mine is just going to be saved in this folder here called Applications Class. You will probably save yours in a different location. And then click the Create button. The first thing that Microsoft Access does is create what's called a table. A table looks an awful lot like a spreadsheet. And so Table 1 is listed here as the table. And then these fields look like a spreadsheet where we create data. So for instance, it's expecting you to start entering data. Let's pretend that this is our customer list and so I would put in the first customer, his last name, his first name, and then the address, and then the city. And so as you type along these fields are automatically created. That's one way to create a database. We could type data all day long, putting people's names and their addresses in but we already have our customers saved in a spreadsheet and so Microsoft Access has a nice way of importing data from a spreadsheet right into this table here. So let's go to our external data 
and we're going to look for the items called import and link. Here's a nice icon here that says import an Excel spreadsheet. So it's looking now. Where is your spreadsheet? So let's go and find one. It says here browse and let's see where did we locate that. I saved it in a folder called access and I'm looking for an access database called customers. So table customers and click open. Click OK. And now the computer says, ah, I recognize that this is a spreadsheet. And you notice that it has all the columns divided according to the cells that were in the spreadsheet. And I'm going to check this item that says first row contains column headings. And so now it knows that the last name and first name and all the things that were in row one are actually labels for what's below them. Let's follow across through this wizard and see how it goes. Last name is the first table. Let's say next, and then we're going to say this has an access key. Microsoft Access likes to have a key, an ID number, let's call it, for every employee and every product, and it automatically creates that for us. So we'll just go ahead and click Next again. And now it says, what's the table going to be called? Well, instead of calling it Sheet 1, let's call it cust Customers or Customer Table and let's click finish and let's click close and you will see that there's a new table appearing on the left side here if I double click it you will see that all of the information that was in my spreadsheet now shows up in a table in access so I have a customer table table one we really don't need anymore I'm just going to close it so I'm right clicking on its tab choosing close and then it's going to say, do you want to save this table? I'll say, no, thank you. So I have one table done. Now we're going to use the other tables that I had created in Excel. So let's follow the same process through again. I'm going to browse. And this time, I'm going to choose the products. Table products is another spreadsheet. And I will click OK to import that. Once again, I'm going to keep this checked where it says first row contains the heading. So I have description and the purchase price, the sale price, the quantity and stock, and the vendor number of who sells this thing. And let's click Next. We can leave these as is. Click Next again. And we're going to create a new index. So we'll have another list of numbers in column 1. Next, and then Finish. No, before Finish, we're going to call this the Product Table. So we know all the products that we sell in our store click close. So if I click on product table twice you will see that we have all the different items that are for sale in our store are now saved as another table. So once more just the idea that we're taking spreadsheets and combining them into Microsoft Access which will make our life easier in the long run. We have one more table to import which was uh, let's see we have customers we have products and now we have the vendors so let's go find the spreadsheet called vendors and then click open click OK once more we want to check the first item and click next now this one already had an ID column in it called vendor ID so I'm going to say I'm going to choose my own primary key it's called and use vendor ID and click next and let's call this vendor table. And finish. There was an error message in vendors, so I'll check on the vendor table and scroll down to see why there was an error. It must be that there was a number here and it couldn't import it. Everything looks normal to me. So I have these three tables. Now let's see what we can do with these. Let's save each one of them by right clicking on the tab and saving each one. The next step that we're going to do is create some forms. A form is simply a screen where you can enter data, you can view products in like a, almost like a web page. It's a form. Now I'm going to create a form for our customer so we can see each customer name in its own screen. 
So I'm going to make sure that the customer table is selected. I'm going to the create item here and I'm just simply clicking form. The form that we create, like I mentioned, is like a web page. It has different items that you can fill in. You can see down here at the bottom that there are 350 different records and so the record browser allows me to scroll forward and back through each of these customers. So you can see their names are being shown on the screen. So over here in the search box I can enter in a search such as I want to look for anything, anyone that has the name or the string J-O-N in it. So I press enter and and you see we get through the, a few of these that are J-O-Ns. Let's see if there's any MC's. Now you can see MC is coming up every time I press the enter key. And so with a database there are nice search tools that allow you to look through your data. So this is the customer table. Let's save that. It says what are you going to call it? Instead of calling it customer table, well, let's give this a better name. Let's call it customer form and click OK. Let's do the same for the others. So let's go to the product table and let's choose a create, create a form automatically we get the product table form and so now we can search through the products in our list. Let's save that. So right click on the tab, choose save. Instead of product table, let's call this thing product form. Click OK. You notice that over on the left index we have three tables. We've created two forms. One form to go. Let's go to the Let's see, we did customer, we did products, vendors. So let's create a form to look at our vendors. Automatically, these are all filled in, and we have 105 vendors to look through. Once more, if you're looking for a certain vendor, we can type in a string like HI, and we find that we have a few vendors with HI in their name. I'm going to right click and save this and instead of vendor table I'll call it vendor form. So now we have three different tables and three forms to view each table. We're going to stop here but the next video will be a way to link these tables together so that they automatically recognize one another. That's called relational tables or relational database systems and it's the most important concept of understanding how a database works. So for bye for now, but we'll be back in a minute 